three and a half years to use the Antichrist, as we saw this morning, to dominate the world, right? Okay? But after three and a half years at Armageddon, Satan and his demons will be cast down into the pit for a thousand years. Sheol Hades. Abbas. And then at the end of the millennium, amazing, they'll be released for a brief season, maybe just a few months, to gather the whole world to follow them to crush Jesus and his people. Now that is a very difficult thing to imagine. And we'll talk more about that tonight, God willing. But then, of course, he will be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. Now, friends, there are a lot of Christians today who ought to know better, who say, well, these things can't literally be true. So you have three groups of people who claim to be Christians. How do they interpret Bible prophecy? Now, my professor of theology at Grace Seminary 50 years ago was Alva J. McLean. Anybody heard of him? Three, all right. <laughs> he spent much of his life studying the kingdom and what God meant by what he said about the coming kingdom. He found there were two kingdoms, two of them. There's the universal kingdom that Jesus rules over and everybody is a 100% bona fide, card-carrying member of the universal kingdom, Satan, demons, everybody. He rules the universe, okay? But within that kingdom, there is what? The mediatorial kingdom that you can't join unless you're a believer, okay? And that is the particular kingdom that Jesus operates in today to finally defeat the enemy, okay? And the last enemy is death. Now, we are dispensational premillennialists. You say, what in the world is that? That means we take the Bible literally, that God has distinct programs for Israel and the church, and he is going to come back when? Before the millennium, before the kingdom. He will establish the kingdom. <clears throat> Let me say something about our, our beloved president, George W. Bush. I am planning, if God has me still here, to vote for him. But he can't bring in the kingdom. Did you know that? I don't care how hard he tries, how, how much he prays, how much he works at this, he can't, he can't bring in the kingdom. Who will? Jesus Christ alone. Okay? And when Jesus brings the kingdom, it'll be at Armageddon when he destroys all opposition. I mean, can you imagine how long has it taken us to take over Iraq? How long will it take Jesus to take over the opposition? Like that. See? He will bring in the kingdom. Literally. So he will come before pre-millennial. Before the thousand years. Okay? But there are some believers that say, no, we don't believe there will ever be a literal kingdom. We don't like the idea of a kingdom. I mean, these are born-again Christians who say, we don't like the kingdom because it sounds like Israel will be in charge and we don't like the Jews. Why not? They crucified our Savior. God threw them forever. So who, who's going to bring in the kingdom? We will. Christians. Churches. That is what? Amillennialism or postmillennialism. See? That is the major view of major Protestant denominations today. The church will bring in the kingdom. Wrong. Because see what they do? The prophecies they say are true but must be interpreted non-literally. But look at these people who are liberals. They believe the prophecies are not true and must be interpreted literally. They say, yes, Isaiah did say there'll be a kingdom, but he was wrong. Daniel did say there'd be, what, a 70, 70 weeks, but he was wrong. They take it literally and say it's false. Now, which of these three would you like? How about this one right here? Take, because that's what Jesus told the two on the road to Emmaus. He said, O oh, fools and slow of heart not to believe all that the prophets have spoken, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he told them everything concerning himself. How many would like a tape recording of that talk? Wow! You know, we really don't need the tape recording. We have the Bible that tells us exactly what Jesus told them. See? It's all in there. So, as far as I know, at least, there's no theologian that says that the prophecies are not true and must be interpreted non-literally. So really, these are your three basic choices today. Now, isn't it amazing that really, 
nearly 2,000 years ago, in the early church, there were men who were saying, let's take this literally. Like this man right here, a Hypolitus, AD 170. He said, for when the three score and two weeks are fulfilled, remember we talked about that this morning, the 70th week of Daniel, it uh, follows the 62 and the 7th. And Christ has come and the gospel is preached in every place the time is being then accomplished. There will be remain only one week, one seven year period, the last, in which Elias will appear in Enoch and in the midst of this of it the abomination of desolation will be manifested that is the antichrist announcing desolation to the world now there was a what a dispensational premillennialist he even believed in a pre-tribulation rapture see of the church well 300 years ago there was a brilliant scientist named Isaac Newton here's what he thought about the time of the end a body of men will be raised up who will turn their attention to the prophecies and insist upon their literal interpretation in the midst of much clamor and opposition. Here we are. Now, I'm not saying that Newton was a prophet. I'm just saying he knew his Bible so well that he knew this had to come to pass. And here we are. Now, as premillennial, pre-tribulation dispensationalists who take the Bible literally, uh, look, look where you're at in the prophetic plan of God. Okay. God made a promise to Abraham. Uh, Pastor, I didn't bring my little red light thing. It's in the bottom of my... Or do you have one? It's in the bottom of my briefcase. Would you mind, sir? That might help us to be able to focus a little bit better on what we're saying here. Okay? God made a promise to Abraham that, that is unconditional. Namely, from your seed, the all through your seed will all the nations of the world be blessed. And I will curse them that curse you, and I will bless them that bless you. And, and you will be the progenitor, the originator uh, of ultimate blessing for the human race. And it turns out, of course, that the seed is Jesus Christ. That's a promise God made to Abraham 4,000 years ago. Now you begin to see, friends, how all this works out, step by step. You see the uh, three black lines that come out of that box called Abrahamic Covenant. Now maybe at this point we need to uh, wait until we have a little pointer here uh, to help us here. This is very basic understanding of the Bible in terms of prophecies, okay? Thank you, Pastor. How many agree the Apostle Paul had to use these? <laughs> there we are, folks. The Abrahamic Covenant. Now, out of that came what? The Palestinian Covenant. Namely, you're going to have a land that will be yours. The promised what? Land. Anybody heard of that one? Okay. That will happen in the kingdom. Israel will have their land again. Look at this. Out of the Abrahamic covenant comes the Davidic covenant. From you will come a king who will be the progenitor of the ultimate king of kings who will take over the world when? At the thousand year kingdom right here. Now watch this one down here. Out of the Abrahamic covenant comes the new covenant of Jeremiah 31, Ezekiel 34, 36 and so forth. God is going to put his law into your heart. You will have to be born again regenerated to enjoy the blessings of the kingdom and that's going to take place when when Jesus comes now all of this will be accomplished watch these lines now folks through the cross of Jesus when he died on the cross to pay for our sins he he made it possible for Israel to have her land for himself to become the final king and for the new covenant, the new birth to take place, see, through the Holy Spirit in our hearts. And the church, you see, the church gets in on this only. We are grafted into the root of the Abrahamic covenant in Re Revelation, excuse me, Romans chapter 11. So we are grafted into the blessings of the new covenant that God promised to Abraham. But did you see there's one box missing here? Look at this one. 
How about the law of 